Do you, do, you, do you think that this could be the beginning of a new kind of awakening, a new kind of thought process about, you know, that specific thing you're talking about, Mr. Gurumurthy, about, you know, the past does not pass. You can't cut yourself off from the past. And the Sengal in many ways, and its uh, rebirth in some ways, its relocation to a, uh, you know, place of uh, much greater visibility, uh, comes to symbolize and represent that sort of reawakening and recognition that the past is not something you can simply shut away? It's, it's as much a correction. We have gone the wrong way. Mm. It is not that uh, this uh, uh, is a new awakening. Actually, it's a correction, course correction. We have got into serious problems by thinking the past is a burden. Mm. You know, the... Uh, all over the world, there is a new thinking that is evolving in the last uh, decade. That even the source of modernity, which was regarded as the enlightened movement in the West, is being discarded now. Each nation, each civilization has its own way of self-renewal and that is the modernization process. Yes. And we, there is no such uh, discourse in India. And that means if that discourse is there, you will have to connect yourself to the past. The mm. Indian discourse is actually, uh, uh, there is a sense of perversion and a sense of self-hate in it. And mm. this single event is a thumping recall of the past, which is associated with the present. That's mm. the most important thing. Sengol connects you to a past of thousand years of the Chola rule and before. Yes. But it connects you to the present through the constitutional rule that evolved on 15th August 1947. It's, a, it's very interesting, uh, Mr. Gurumurthy, how you mentioned, you, you, you suggest that the Sengol kind of disappeared in that tsunami of trying to, uh, you know, get away from the past and disconnect from the past right after independence. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Sengol itself was discovered, like you rightly said, in the Anand Bhavan Museum uh, in Prayagraj, you know, where the caption very interestingly says, uh, you know, golden walking stick given to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. What did you think of that? You know, we, we asked the people from the Vumidi family also yesterday about the Sengol being described as a walking stick and they said that they were quite surprised, uh, you know, that it had been described so. What did you think, sir? You see, it is unfortunate that when uh, such a, a high value uh, symbol is being placed in the parliament, that such a, some, uh, I don't think it was some decision taken at the highest level to, uh, that it had come from the uh, prime minister's house mm. and uh, a fellow who doesn't know about any of these things, he thought it was a stick and what is the best way to describe it is the walking <laughs> stick. Yeah. I think a five foot tall uh, the golden uh, stick with a nandi on the top with the inscriptions should be described like this shows the callousness with which we handle the past. You see, we are just callous about it. Mm. We we use very strong words. We we use very strong words against our literature, against our forefathers, against our traditions. You know, we are used to that. It has become a normal to abuse the Indian traditions. And I don't in that atmosphere. If something like this happened, I will again attribute it to the same atmosphere or uh, the tsunami of hate against our past is the reason why such a recent symbol has been described like this. And I feel very, very bad. And the, anyone who had done that should be called to account. And how the symbol got transferred from uh, uh, it, when it was handed over to Pandit Nehru, Mm. by the Shaivite saint on 14th August. It was not just it was handed over. Eleven verses of the Tevaram was sung and with the blessings of uh, the divinity you will rule. When such a thing was heaven, who handled it from stage to stage, year to year, when it was deposited, who gave this inscription, this should be found out by an inquiry. Okay, I wonder if that inquiry will actually happen. It's very interesting. Uh, what we know for sure is that the country and the world, uh, you know, after, after well over 70 years will, uh, for their first time, set their eyes 
on the Sengol uh, for real because it's going to be set right next to the Lok Sabha speaker uh, in the new parliament. Mr. Gurumurthy, final question to you. I know you don't want to get into the politics of the day and what's happening, uh, but you know, among those who will not be able to regard the, 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 the Sengol on day one when the parliament is opened this Sunday, is going to be virtually the entire opposition. Nineteen parties have said that they are going to boycott parliament. It's a very significant and symbolic day, even beyond just the Sengal. I must have your thoughts on that, sir. What do you think of that? You see, I feel that, of course, the boycott of the parliament has been one of the ways the opposition has been protesting against the ruling party for a long time. In fact, uh, uh, I have had discussions with very top political leaders on this and nobody is happy with this. Mm. Who, uh, even the BJP when it was in the opposition, it was not happy with that, but it was still doing it. I can understand the political compulsions which make you boycott politics when a bill is being presented or when, a, when somebody is talking, you walk out. But this is not one such occasion. Yeah. Where, where, where you, you may even understand boycotting parliament is a new normal in Indian democracy for the last 25-30 years. This is not an occasion in which this should be happening. There yes. should be a line drawn that where this, uh, this uh, protest to the extent of boycotting, where it should not be. That line is not there. That wisdom is not there. That is not good for democracy. As much as the opposition says that the ruling party's conduct is not good for democracy, Mr. You Gurumurthy, are not drawing yes. the line between where you should be you carrying on that protest. If you don't draw the line, then you are harming the very democracy which you are trying to protect. This is point one. Point two, at mm. least the single function should be separated from your parliament uh, work. And the opposition should attend the uh, single function. The DMK par party, after it came to power, it has presented a report to the Tamil Nadu Assembly in 2021 after Stalin took over that a, a symbolic presentation was made by the Tamil Nadu Adinam uh, uh, in the form of a single. It recalled it with pride and it is part of the official records of the Assembly. Mm -hmm. So I feel the DMK owns it really. Why they have, uh, uh, they are part of it, I cannot understand. It's very interesting. You've given us a great deal to chew on and to think about over the next couple of days leading up to this big occasion. Uh, personally, congratulations to you, uh, Mr. Guru Murthy, because after all, uh, you know, even though I know you're Thank a you. self-effacing man, you don't want to take any credit publicly, but it is your article that set off this chain of events that will finally result in the unveiling of the Sengol in a much more visible spot, not in a Prayagraj museum, but in India's new parliament. What could be better than that and more befitting an ornament that was part of India's day one of independence?